Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and every month on the channel, Plex, the makers of an awesome media serving application, sponsors a video here on the channel where we do a deep dive into some of the many features that this media serving application can do. And it's a great way to organize and watch all of your media, whether you're at home or away somewhere. And a few months ago, we did something on the Plex DVR where I covered it in detail to show you how it all works. And basically, if you have an HD home run tuner, uh, you can record over the air television or cable television right into your Plex library. And I uh, detailed how it all works and how to set it up in that other video, which will be linked uh, down below in the playlist. But I did want to go into a little bit more detail on the DVR this month because uh, there are some really helpful applications out there, including this one called MCE Buddy that allows you to uh, strip commercials out of your recordings and also make them smaller because usually these over-the-air broadcasts are these enormous MPEG-2 files and this allows you to automatically uh, grab those files as they're recorded, strip the commercials out of them, make them smaller and uh, makes it a little bit easier to watch stuff on the road or uh, just get something to play more reliably on your mobile devices. We're going to take a look at how to set it up, how it works and all that good stuff here in this video. Now, I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure that this video is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, they do not control the content. They just have me do a video about their uh, software every month. So they haven't seen this. They're not reviewing this content before it's posted. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. And I also wanted to add that MCE Buddy is not a Plex developed application. This is from a separate developer. It's a completely separate piece of software. And in full disclosure, they provided a license to the channel free of charge about two or three years ago, but I never actually found a good easy use case for it until now. Plex really uh, made this process a lot easier. I'll explain what I mean by that uh, in just a few seconds when we get into it. I also wanted to let you know that Silicon Dust, the makers of the HD home run device that makes all of this happen, are an occasional sponsor here on the channel. So let's get into it and see how all this works. Now, one of the things that I love about the Plex media server is how nicely it organizes all of your media for you. So for example, I have on a network attached storage device, one of those WD My Clouds in my closet over there, a big folder full of stuff. There's probably several hundred video files of TV episodes and some movies and some other stuff to just in a big blob on that uh, device. Now, what Plex does is it goes in and looks at the file names and it actually is able to parse out every one of those video files and organizes them very neatly. So for example, even though I've got just a big blob of folders on that network attached storage device, it actually was able to break everything out uh, by seasons for this show called The Expanse on the Sci-Fi Channel. So I can go in here and look at all the episodes in season one. I can select a specific episode, get all the information about it, click play and start watching it. And it handles DVR recordings the same way. In fact, uh, you could record directly into this library, for example, and just have those files added to the mix. Uh, what I've done just for the uh, interest of simplification in this video is actually created a separate library for my DVR recordings. And I'll tell you why I did that in a second. But uh, here you have things that the DVR recorded. And again, it organizes everything very nicely by uh, television show and the season. And I can uh, dig into each episode just like I did before, because really these are just Plex libraries. And what happens is this DVR engine just drops the file off and Plex does its thing to organize and indexes all the media from there. And uh, on the computer, the one that actually did the recording, this is what those files look like. So even though we've got just a folder full of files over here uh, on the uh, server, it's actually very neatly organized for when I want to watch stuff. And one of the advantages of Plex is that uh, you just have to put a file in the folder and it does all of this for you. Likewise, if you delete a file, it then just takes it out. So it's really nothing that uh, you have to worry about. You can actually go in outside of Plex and do work on these files and Plex will re-index whenever uh, you specify it to do so and it will uh, keep all of that stuff working for you. And that is why MCE Buddy is working really well for me now. So MCE Buddy actually was written for uh, the Windows Media Center edition, which many of us are still using as our network DVRs in our homes. And uh, the, it works great, actually, in that it could grab those files that were recorded by the Windows Media Center, uh, do the work of stripping commercials and making the files smaller. But you couldn't reintegrate those files very easily into Windows Media Center. And that's why I hadn't really done all that much with it. But because Plex is so flexible, when I'm having this, this the software do right now is grab those files directly out of my Plex folders after they're recorded, 
do the work on them, delete the original file, and then replace it with the smaller one, and everything just slides right into place, and uh, Plex is working exactly as it did before. In fact, uh, every one of these episodes in here, actually, there's two that are being worked on right now, but the uh, majority of the episodes in here, including Better Call Saul, have been uh, processed and are now are the smaller versions with no commercials on there. And again, it didn't do anything to the indexing here. Everything is working just as it did before, but now I have less you know, sp space being taken up on my server and I don't have commercials in there either. So if I want to go back and watch an episode a few months later, I don't have to keep skipping through stuff. I've got it all uh, in a nice file format. The other advantage here also is because I'm compressing down to a smaller file format, I have less issues playing on mobile devices like phones and other things because if you are recording over the air, you're likely recording MPEG-2, which really makes it difficult for uh, streaming to yourself off-site or even just playing back on phones and tablets in your house because there might have to be some transcoding done on the server ahead of time. This eliminates a lot of those problems. In fact, you can get these files set up to play back uh, for your target device during this process, which will make everything a lot easier as you look to play back in the future. So let's start things off on my Plex server and how I have everything configured. So what I created was a DVR recordings library, which sits on the server's hard drive. And you could do this onto your C drive, for example, as I'm doing right now, or you could uh, just have it recording to a local USB drive. And the reason why I did this is just to uh, reduce the amount of network traffic going to my network attached storage device. So right now I've got a WD MyCloud. This is kind of dedicated to uh, media storage for my Plex server. But uh, if I was using it as my DVR storage location, the server would be grabbing all the content from uh, uh, the HD home run and then retransmitting it to the NAS device and it just would load it up a little bit too much especially with all the IO going on all the network going in and out I figured it'd be more efficient to record directly onto the server and again you could use a USB hard drive or the local hard drive also MCE buddy needs to grab those files to work on them so I figured if I'm recording a lot of stuff having these files you know multiple gigabytes of files being transferred back and forth all the time uh, may not be the most efficient use of that NAS device so again we're using uh, the uh, the server's local storage to do this. Now what you could do when you're done uh, with the file is have MCE Buddy actually drop off the finished file over into your main uh, TV shows directory, for example, on your NAS. So you can have the uh, local hard drive do all the recording and then MCE Buddy will process the file, delete the original and copy the uh, completed file back to your NAS device, at which point Plex will pick it up and re-index it. There's a bunch of different ways you can do this. So uh, you'll see how some of that might work as I go through some of the other features. But for this video, I thought it'd be simpler just to have everything operate out of a single folder here. So C colon backslash Plex DVR is uh, where everything gets done. And if I go over to the program guide, for example, if I wanted to record, uh, for example, maybe, uh, I don't know, we'll look at uh, this U.S. House of Representatives thing here. If I click on the recording button, it'll give me the option, of course, to record this episode or all episodes. And I can choose which library to put it into at the time that I record it. So right now it's going to that DVR recordings thing if I want, but I could also uh, shoot it over to my NAS device in the TV shows library, which is the library that points there. So you do have the option to figure out you know, where these recordings go when you make them. But again, right now we're going to put this uh, directly onto uh, the computer's own hard drive. So within that drive here is what these files look like. So for example, right now, uh, MCE Buddy is doing some work on NCIS and that file is living inside of this folder right now. And really what happens here is that MCE Buddy is pointed at a folder and it just looks at that folder anytime a new file gets recorded and uh, dropped off there. Basically after Plex is done recording it, MCE Buddy picks it up and immediately begins looking for commercials. After it's done looking for commercials, it strips them out, rebuilds the file, and then it recompresses it to that smaller file format. I have it configured to delete that original file and uh, copy the other one back in in its place. But again, you have the option to do a lot of specific configuration on it, which is what we're going to do right now. Now there is a cost associated with MCE Buddy. It's a $30 contribution to its developer that will get you the latest and most stable version of their software. And they'll also uh, give you access to new versions as they are coming out. There's also a library integrated into MCE Buddy called ComSkip that is used to detect the commercials in the files that you'll be sending over to MCE Buddy. It is optimized to work with MPEG-2 files that you might get from over the air broadcasts. 
but many cable providers like mine is doing here in Connecticut uh, is now integrating H.264 into their digital cable lineup, in other words, MPEG-4 files, and uh, Comskip will work with those, but it runs a lot slower. So to get it to run at full speed, you got to pay a $10 donation to Comskip to get the latest version of their library. So there's about a $40 cost here uh, to get everything up and running, but it's definitely worth looking at. Now I want to pop over to my Windows computer now, and we're going to see how MCE Buddy works. This runs on your server. You can have it run on your Plex server if you wish, or you can have it run on a different computer and just point it at the files you wish to look at. Uh, but you will need a Windows computer for all of this to operate. So I'm going to click on the Settings button here to see what I have currently established for my settings. And as you can see here, I've got it looking at C colon backslash Plex DVR. This is the same folder that Plex is using to drop off its recordings when it is done. So MCE Buddy is looking in that folder whenever it detects a new file that it hasn't seen before, it gets to work on converting that file. And when it's done, it will then convert it to MP4 and drop it off in that same folder. And I have it configured, as you'll see in a second, to delete the original file when it does that. Now, what you could do here is have it start in this folder and then drop it off on your network attached storage device or some other place. You really have no limit to where you can send these files when it's done. You can even have it start here and then drop off files in multiple locations with different conversion tasks done to them in the process. There's a lot of depth to this, uh, but we're going to keep it really simple. But I think as you see uh, some of these settings, you can figure out some of the things that you might want to do here moving forward. So right now, by default, it's looking in that directory. It's going to look for any subdirectories that get created, and it's looking for all of these different file extensions. This is all basically the default settings that it came with. Now, if I go into expert settings, you can see here that I have it deleting the original file, uh, which is really what I want it to do. Some folks may not want to do that in case something happens with the commercial uh, removal or something, but uh, you do have the option to leave it in place, or you can archive the original file, basically move it out and put it someplace else in case the commercial uh, removal thing didn't work properly and you want to go back in and do it again. You can keep an archive somewhere, but remove it from the original location. Uh, there's also a option here to not act on the file right away. So if you wanted to maybe wait a couple hours, maybe you want to watch it right away and not have it start uh, working on the file while you're in the middle of watching it, you can uh, put a delay on it so that it doesn't start until two or three hours or more after it is recorded. So that is an option that you can do there. Over here on the conversion tasks, I'll click on the uh, change option there and you can see what some of our options are here. So basically what's going to happen here is that it's going to look for that file there. The conversion task is what happens to the file after it is done being worked on. And uh, right now I've got it converting to MP4 normal, which is an okay video quality, but you can set it to higher quality. Uh, there are some additional settings here that you can do to it. So uh, you do have the ability to kind of adjust some of its options down here. One of the things that I had to do was set the maximum width to 1920 for whatever reason this was set to uh, SD, standard definition, so it was converting my high def files to standard def files essentially, so I put this 1920 in for the maximum width so that it would uh, keep the HD aspect ratio intact when it did that, and I can also bump up the quality here if I want to do that as well. And again, you have other presets here that you can uh, look at, including things that don't actually recompress the file at all. So what you can do is just, for example, the TS files that come off my HD home run, I can just leave them unprocessed, yet have it take the commercials out. So you do have the ability to go off a whole bunch of uh, different presets here, depending on what your target device is. And again, you can add multiple versions of these if you wish. So you could have MP4 normal go to Plex, and maybe you've got uh, some iTunes library for your old iPod or something that you want to convert these videos to. You can have it do that as a separate process later. I have it set to use Comskip here. I could turn it off if I wish, uh, or I can even have it just detect the ads only, but not actually remove them. So you have some options there. Um, this is something that a lot of Windows Media people were using, which was to add it to the Windows Media Player afterward. You could also add it to iTunes, but since we're using Plex here, it's going to handle all of the uh, re-indexing of the file for us. So basically what's going to happen here, it's going to uh, grab that file, convert it, drop it off in the same place it found it, and delete the original. And like I said, so far it has been working uh, just fine. There's a few other settings down here, things that I haven't even touched, but you can schedule this thing to only run at certain times. So if your server's getting hit really hard during the day, you can only have it uh, scheduled for the evening to do those sorts of things. You could have it send you an email notification when it's done doing what it's doing, and you can also have it do multiple conversions at the same time if you have more cores available on your device. My uh, laptop is only a dual core device, so maybe one or two Macs is probably the best way to go on that, but you do have the option to have it process more things at the same time.
Now, it also supports subtitles. What it can do is grab the closed captioning that might be part of your broadcast and break it out into a separate SRT file, which you can then have brought over to your Plex server when it is done with its conversion. It'll just drop it off just like it does the video file. So if you click on this option, it will extract those things. I believe there are options also to bake the captions directly into the file as well. I don't do a lot of subtitling, so one of you will have to correct me on that, but I think the best way to do this is to have it create that SRT file and have it deliver that along with the uh, completed video file into your uh, Plex directory when it is done. If I'm wrong, definitely correct me down in the comments section. Maybe I'll revisit this in a future video. I also wanted to show you what happens when it is done. So this is the same exact broadcast here. This is the uh, MPEG-2 file that came off my HD home run into my uh, Plex DVR recording engine. The file size is 3.23 gigabytes uh, because my local affiliate is still broadcasting in MPEG-2. They all are. Uh, and my cable system is still bringing that MPEG-2 file into my digital cable system. Even though the cable channels are M uh, MPEG-4 now, uh, broadcast channels are still MPEG-2. 3.23 gigs to start. When MCE Buddy was done, it brought that file size down to about 400 megabytes, so a lot easier to deal with. It does have some compression artifacts. I might be tweaking the quality settings here, but uh, you can make the files as high quality as you want or uh, somewhere in between, which is probably where I'll end up, somewhere in between. I also wanted to show you how the commercial skip works out on this. It actually does a pretty nice job of it. So this is the original file here. I'm going to start playing it now. It'll jump to the commercial break right around here, and you can see now that the ads are starting to run. Here is that same portion on the converted file. Again, same broadcast, but the commercial skip is in place. So uh, we'll get to that same part of the, uh, the uh, show here. It'll cut the black, and then it'll come back immediately to uh, the program here. So you do hear kind of the tail end of the ad sometimes. It's never always going to be perfect, but uh, generally I have found, uh, at least in the most of the stuff I've been watching over the past couple of days, that it has been very effective at finding the portions of the show where there's an ad and getting rid of just about 98% of all of it. And you sometimes will see like the tail end of the ad uh, when it comes back in, but generally it's been really effective at uh, stripping out the advertisements. You'll probably do better doing it yourself by hand, but uh, this is a very quick and automatic way to make it all happen. And again, it's working in the background. Uh, so once it's done recording, MCE Buddy picks it up. It'll start doing its thing. When it's done, it deletes the original file and then copies over the one it was working on. And you've got a really nice archive on there. So that is how I've been using MCE Buddy to enhance my Plex DVR experience. I've been quite pleased with how it's been working so far. I've kind of been in uh, experimental mode here just to see how all these things come together, but it really does work seamlessly and it kind of delivers what I was hoping MCE Buddy would have done for me on uh, Windows Media Center in that I can take that original file, process it, and just replace it right in its spot so uh, everything is working exactly where I want it to be because uh, for all this DVR stuff, it needs to pass the family test. In other words, can my wife and children uh, operate this DVR without having to look for their content in four different places? And uh, this is what Plex is delivering to me right now is the ability to do all of that and uh, the fact that I can delete that large original file and replace it with a smaller one without any interruption to anybody is a really good thing. And that's one of the advantages that you have in using Plex as your uh, main media server. Now, there is a downside to this, which is the fact that you can't use uh, DRM protected content uh, with Plex or with MCE Buddy. So you have to be either getting your stuff from over the air sources or on a cable provider that doesn't uh, DRM encrypt everything that comes over their wire. And unfortunately, there are cable providers that encrypt everything and that will uh, limit your options. But if you are a cord cutter and doing this over the air, uh, what you see here should work quite well, actually, as it's been working for me uh, here at my house. So that'll do it for this uh, Plex-sponsored video. I want to thank Plex for uh, doing this sponsored series with us and kind of giving us the creative freedom to do whatever we want with these videos. Uh, we'll be doing a lot more with Plex in the coming months, so definitely keep those questions, comments, and ideas coming down below in the comments section. And this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters including Gold Level supporters Mark Bollinger and Brian Miller. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.